Do you not know about unattended young men in Greece? No, I only know about unattended young men in uh, Kharkiv. I'm afraid I don't have full knowledge of unattended young men in all parts of the world. What are we on about now? First of all, the first thing I'm noting here, because I'm only seeing the back of their heads, is that they all have the same fucking haircut. All of them, I don't know if they're trying to get close to his bald perfection, but all of them have either, like, the, the zoomer fade, or they just have, like, the default, I don't know what to do with my hair, so I just won't have any, like, number three on the Clippers setting. Feral children. And they all look like kids! Don't they? Does this not look like a group of kids together? Oh. Especially funny, they're all wearing black, exactly the way insecure young men would, if they don't want their, um, their body shape to stand out. A lot of it is probably also the camera angle, man, but holy shit, I feel like everyone here is five feet tall. Look at this fucking kid! Ah, uh, does the video just loop here? Why well, have the video loop over and over? That's kind of weird. Greek culture promotes so much misogyny. Well, yeah, they they discovered long ago that they only needed men, so they don't they have no need for women. Um, dozens of Greek youth. I'd say this is hundreds. You can say hundreds. In the center of Athens on Sunday in solidarity or marched uh, in solidarity, social media influencer Andrew Tate has been arrested in Romania on allegations of trafficking and rape. Videos uploaded on social media show the youth shouting "Release Top G." as they pass through Tintagma Square and Ermo Street in the center of the Greek capital. Um, that's the most 40 people you can see where the crowd ends in the second half of the video. Is that true? I felt I feel like it was more than 40, but, you know, yeah, whatever. Doesn't really matter. Uh, and then they go on with the, uh, the bit here. I want to know more about, like, how this got organized. Does anyone have any info on that specifically? <laughs> Okay, I won't be too mean. Let's not be too mean. This is an old video. Is it? From the right time. Man, they really are all kids, dude. Dude, like, actually, though, holy shit. When we get a physiognomy check on these lads, it's genuinely, like, a bunch of 13-year-olds. God. Actually really sad. Yeah, where are these kids' parents? Like, where... Like... Oh yeah, I'm going out with with the lads today, Ma mom. How do Greek people say mom? Ma mama. Oh yeah, what are you doing? Oh, I'm just going to go to the center of the city and scream that I want my sex trafficking internet idol to be released. Do you not know about unattended young men in Greece? No, I only know about unattended young men in uh, Kharkiv. I'm afraid I don't have full knowledge of unattended young men in all parts of the world. Mama is a safe bet for a lot of languages. Yeah, probably. Mostly organized through hooligan football clubs who are historically right-leaning mostly. That old guy is President GR, a famous libertarian Greek. The one, the one who is hold this, this guy, he does look kind of weird being there. We've seen that. That guy had the FR, FR, no cap hair. This is the organizer, a right-wing TikToker making crypto videos. Literally is all crypto types, man. Also, that link doesn't work. Uh, no, okay, I like this video a lot because it captures some very important context, which is the bewildered adults after the mob of unruly teenage boys sort of drifts through. And then you pan back around. What? Oh shit, they're coming back! Okay, that's enough. Imagine the smell. Ugh, they really hate women, Vosh? Yeah, that's true.
A link on Greek women confronting macho culture? Like a video? See, we're a recurring issue here. I don't actually speak Greek. Oh, it's text. Well, I can't read English either. These kids should have been bullied more in school. It is worth noting that, like, these kids are absolutely the victims of bullying and not the perpetrators. It's, it's just the incel crowd, right? Like, it keeps taking different forms, but it is always fundamentally the incel crowd. People with the, you know, and, and, and not to say that, like, bullies have high confidence because they don't. But generally, you know, people, it, the kind of people who get drawn into this are people who are, at least who feel like they're being pushed to, uh, to desperation. Like, they have literally nothing else going for them, which is pretty wild. I'm Greek, they were all high school students, it's embarrassing. Yeah, well, this is one of the reasons why I've been talking more about, like, being able to give a narrative to young men, you know? So, for, I, I want to point out, first of all, at, at the stage these young men are in, they're feral and may not be able to be saved. Uh, some of them will, but, you know, I, I'm not saying that people on the left need to develop the rhetorical skills and talking points necessary to go up to a, like, feral 17-year-old Greek boy running around Athens and explain to them how actually feminism is... Like, that's, that's like, that's very down the, you know, like, I'm not, not to say these guys are lost causes or anything. This is just like a, this is a more difficult engagement, you know, topic-wise. Nobody's born like this, right? Like, nobody, nobody just wakes up one day and goes, oh, that, that, that person who's been arrested for rape and sex trafficking? Yeah, that's actually my idol. That guy's actually my, my G. Like, look at these kids. Maybe this one's a bit older, I guess. Look at this guy's like four feet tall. Look at the face shape on this one. He hasn't even learned how to get a haircut yet. This is the same bob of hair that every 13-year-old boy has until he sits down at a salon for the first time in his life and actually, like, address... Like, look at this. These guys weren't born, you know, uh, uh, just like thinking like, ah, yeah, dude, I love my sex trafficking idol. They had to be kind of moved into this position. But, and this is really important to understand, this kind of masculinity is really like pathetic. An actualized guy, like even if they were misogynistic, a guy who feel who has like all of his shit in order, like he's got a girlfriend, he feels confident, strong, you know, whatever, they would not be doing this. This is the behavior of people who are aspirationally masculine. This is people who feel empty or feel like they could be doing better, and uh, and 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 they're 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 running down the roads they think will give them like a, a better sense of self or more confidence or 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 give them what they think is due, whether that be like power or authority or money or women or whatever, but it's definitely the road for the desperate, you know? And then you see stuff like this and it's like, okay, so why are they desperate and what can you do? What, what, can, you, what can you do to give them a better outlet for their desperation than this, right? If you're a young man, there is definitely a better thing you could be doing on, I don't know, a Saturday night or whenever this happened. There's definitely a better... There's definitely a better use of your time, you know, potentially, uh, than this. How about a new Matrix movie? We did get a new, na uh, new Matrix movie. What sucks is probably a concerning percentage of these boys think Tate did rape in traffic, but they think it's good and makes him a real man. Yeah, that's true. But again, nobody is born into this position. So what moved them over to this? Now, I'm going to take a couple of guesses. I definitely don't think it was their parents for the most part. This is just a guess of mine, but no matter what kind of mom or dad you have, I don't think they would ever want you to do this. I don't think there are many dads out there, even piece of shit like misogynist dads or abusive dads or whatever, who would be like, yeah, this internet idol that you're obsessing over. It's kind of like how, like, I don't think a parent would ever recommend that their child be obsessive about Jordan Peterson because Jordan Peterson is a surrogate dad for a lot of guys, you know? Um, there's something that th is pursued in the perceived absence of parental authority, not something the parents push you towards, like, directly themselves. Oh, yes, they would, Vosh. You've never seen a Greek dad. Maybe, maybe I'm just underestimating or maybe overestimating Greek dads here. I, I just, if you try, like, God, like, look at these kids. This one right here is legit, like, 12. Same with this one. Maybe younger. Look at this. And none of this is going to make them happy or get them anything. The, trust me, you know, for, for any of those, uh, for any of those in question, worshipping Andrew Tate, consuming his secondhand content through a network of pyramid scheme crypto grifters is not actually the pathway to pussy. Uh, not a tried and true method, okay? Just doesn't work.
Jesus Christ. I mean, like, God. How can anyone on the left look at this and not think that there's something that needs to be done? Is Tate disproportionately popular in Greece? Um, maybe. I mean, I don't know. They're closer to Romania than I am. Greece does have a really weird culture when it comes to misogyny and male entitlement, I think. I've heard that. I, I don't know. I, I, I don't know, like, much in the way of details. How do we solve a problem like this, though? Well, my guess is, and when I, when I say my guess, what I actually mean is I'm, I know this for a fact because my brain is big, is that a lot of these guys feel like they're being emasculated by society, which is kind of funny because these are like prepubescent guys, a lot of them. So the masculinity they think is being robbed of them that is not, is literally not there. Like it's not, it's not even a thing. I think people, people like having a story about how they're going to grow up, right? People like having a, a narrative about how they can grow and what they can grow into. That's really important for everyone. This is one of the reasons why we care a lot about representation and diversity in media. Because if you're black in America and you're looking at American TV and American film and everything, and all black people are like, like thugs in the inner city or like janitors or whatever, in your mind, you kind of get the message implicitly or explicitly that, you know, that's kind of what society has in mind for you. Like that's the role if with without proper diversity and representation, you kind of get the feeling that society doesn't have much in mind for you. And I think the issue with a lot of these guys is they feel like there's not really a clear path to to being a man. You know what I mean? So right now, women have a a fairly clear path, no matter where in society they are. In more misogynistic, regressive parts of the world, women are uh, put on the housekeeper path. And that's a pretty straight line, like down the road, like very, you know, society locks in a very strong narrative for like, ah, yes, you will have children and you will raise the children and you will cook for a husband and blah, 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 blah. Right. And in, you know, in more like a developed or like progressive or feminist Western cultures, there's more of an attitude about like girl bossing this shit. Right. You have more autonomy as a woman. Uh, you have your pick of men if you want. Uh, there are some women who like feel a dissonance where there's like, I want to be big in my career, but I also want to have children. But I feel like we, we have an understanding of where these roads lead, especially when it comes to interpersonal relationships. To put it another way, I think women have a lot of direction and also a lot of leeway when it comes to how to define themselves socially. That doesn't mean that women never have trouble with this. It just means that I feel like there's a lot of social instruction on how to engage with other people as a woman because women are socialized to be more sociable and to be more permissive socially. And also because in romantic relationships, they're given a little bit more um, perceived power over like whether or not they want to have that conversation with other people to begin with. So like the woman decides whether she's interested or whether she wants to have the convo. I'm simplifying things massively. I'm mostly talking about like narratives and stories, not so much about reality. It's, it's mostly about the idea of like, can you look at the world around you and get an idea of what society expects of you when it comes to interpersonal engagements? And for a lot of women, I think they have an easier time with this than men do. Because with men, there's this like really like weird dissonance where men are expected to be kind of like confident loners who are, you know, like um, reserved with their emotions uh, and, and, and like, uh, you know, they, they, they're not like super like outgoing when it comes to their feelings. They don't wear their heart in their sleeve. But at the same time, they're also expected to be the ones who approach others. Uh, they're not socialized to be as direct and sociable or as friendly with other people, which means there's less leeway when it comes to the expression of these positions. Be they're told to suppress their emotions, but also they're told that they have to be the ones to lead in social engagements, which means that like that doesn't really work, right? Because how do you how do you lead social engagements while also being subtle with your emotions? That's really difficult to do, actually. Normally the way, like, think of how women open with each other in terms of like starting a convo, like not in real life, but in the story. Think of how women ought to. Think of how you see it in TV and movies. 
women, when they engage with each other, are often pretty jubilant or direct with their feelings. You know, you're so pretty. Wow, I really like this thing. But open complimentary behavior from men is something that's considered to be exclusively for flirting. That is to say, men never go up to each other and say, oh, dude, you look so pretty today. That's considered gay. Women do that with each other all the time. There's a, a road there. Do you, do you know what I'm talking about? Does this make any sense? I want, to, I want to stress that I am A, simplifying, and B, talking about social narratives, not about the actual lived experience of every single, like, guy who, or, or girl who's ever lived or whatever. You have all these stories on how women are supposed to behave with each other, and I think it gives leeway for making friendships and developing relationships and figuring out how you're supposed to behave. Guys don't have that to the same extent. Yeah, men are taught to be emotionally closed off, but also taught that anger is a masculine emotion, which means that um, oftentimes anger is the only emotion they seem to feel comfortable expressing. We've all known the kind of guy who is extremely emotionally reserved until something sets him off, and then anger is the only emotion he can express. Like, that, a lot of guys are like that, and it's socially destructive. Like, it leaves them very little room for actually forming relationships because they suck to be around. Men can't compliment each other, exactly Metroplex, without it being considered, like, a gay thing or whatever, which means that men don't often form, like, very close pair bonds. A another good example of this would be, if you're a guy and you've had guy friends, you've probably noticed that there are some guy friends you can have where you've known them, like, closely for a decade, but you just never talk about your emotions with each other. Like, not I I'm not even talking, like, a big, like, teary breakdown or whatever. I, I, I mean, like... The idea of calling them or talking to them and just saying like, dude, I've had a really shit day. Can I talk to you about it? That's literally a thing that guys don't do, which is insane. That's like the most simple shit in the world. It's, but, but a lot of guys are socialized to not do that. So to sum it all up, I think the reason why you're seeing a lot of this is because this is the, this is the reaction that a lot of young guys have when they feel like there is either no or a very incomprehensible, difficult, unrewarding social narrative to guide their behavior in front of them. These are guys who have bought into the narrative that men shouldn't be openly emotional, except for anger, uh, that they shouldn't, you know, uh, 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 be, uh, you know, like um, close to others or, or be emotionally reciprocative. But they've taken that to its extreme now with the idea that they're, they're you know, sort of... Um, making a, 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 like a masculine archetype out of sociopathy where it's like okay so we're not supposed to be emotional and we're like supposed to be like loners who focus on breadwinning okay then let's do that L literally like everything else like everything you know women aren't here for us nobody else is here for us whatever like we're gonna like yeah you want this of us we're gonna do this that's not a justified reaction this is an insane thing to do but I do think that's one of the things pushing them in that direction. A lot of them feel like there's basically no way for them to get the interest of women anyway, because um, they've bought into a lot of these like red pill incel narratives about women, hypergamy, never sleeping with guys, whatever. So th they're under the impression that the only way to be a functional and successful man in today's society is by fully embracing every negative and destructive archetype associated with masculinity. Because, hey, you know, uh, if they're going to have the social stigmas associated with those traits imposed on them anyway, they might as well lean into it. To be clear, I'm not justifying any of this shit. It's psychotic. I'm just saying I think that's kind of what's pushing them this way. It is loser behavior. It's uh, beta behavior. Very, very beta. But, you know, it's important to understand, I think, where a lot of this comes from. The farther down this road they go, they go, the more they're going to start building legitimizing mechanisms on top of their underlying feelings. The basic feeling working here, the like, Jesus Christ, four foot nothing here. The basic feeling this infant has here is one of like basic insecurity. It's like an insecurity, like a fear that he's not going to be able to get what he feels he deserves as a man. Like he's not going to get a narrative. He's not going to get a story. And then on top of that fear, on top of that insecurity, you start building out, like, other legitimizing mechanisms. Well, why does he feel that way, and what can be done to fix it? And then the more time you spend in these hate movements, the further up you build these justifications, until eventually you're arguing with guys who want to, like, revoke women's suffrage, and they don't actually think that. The only reason they've arrived at that position is because they're 14 levels down from 
their actual position, which is that they're afraid. It's an emotional state to begin with, not an underlying ethical justification, but an underlying emotional justification. Does that make sense? How important is the narrative slash self-fulfillment to people? The narrative is everything. Ah yeah, Slavoj Žižek on Greece, the courage of hopelessness. The people of Greece are not being asked to swallow many bitter pills in exchange for a realistic plan. This is one of the reasons why fascism tends to rise from economic insecurity. Men are the ones who are expected to be breadwinners. So when the narrative of them being able to provide for a family is taken away from them, they search for other narratives to legitimize their masculinity. If they can't be a man by providing for the family, they will be a man um, by being a brown shirt or something. You know, and narratives are very important. Uh, outside of our own lives in the day-to-day -day, like rigmarole of what we actually do and say and believe, we have a story that we tell ourselves about what kind of person we are and where we fit into the larger social story. What, what narrative we construct, what, what role we play in a larger system. Everyone does this to an extent. There's nothing wrong with doing it. It's just a way of better understanding our role in the world. But people, uh, people can react very poorly to this being taken away from them. And if you're wondering if this is just a man thing, it's not. Um, I haven't really dug into this that much because it's definitely a younger phenomena, but there is absolutely a swell of like trad con, like rad femme, femme cells on TikTok. It's definitely like a rising tendency right now for a bunch of young women to jump into reactionary expectations for women when it comes to like being a housewife or taking care of the kids and like being like a, a domestic uh you know and they're doing it not because they have innate conservative positions but because they consider the adoption of those traits to be a radical readoption of an identity that's been stolen from them by modernity which in a way is a kind of like postmodern critique of progressivism because it's not even about the innate moral superiority of the initial position, but rather the construct, the, like the, 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 an attack on the dissolution of identity itself, which tends to overlap with fascist movements. Um, a lot of these women are also TERFs, because obviously if you're jumping into reactionary standards when it comes to the presumed roles of women in a traditional sense, you're not going to take very kindly to that kind of queer business. But also, interestingly, a lot of these rad fem, fem cell types, while being transphobic, are also themselves uh, gay. It's very interesting. We'll, we'll dig more into this in the future.